Today I'm going to show you how to knit a pair of fingerless mittens. These mittens are a great project if you're comfortable knitting with double pointed needles and you're looking to take your knitting to the next level. Knit in sport weight yarn, these mitts come together pretty quickly and they don't require much yarn at all. This pattern also includes three sizes to fit your beautiful hands. We'll go through this pattern step by step from cast on to cast off. I've also made video chapters with timestamps in the description so you can easily navigate this video. So grab the free pattern at the link below print it out and follow along. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider buying a beautiful PDF of this pattern. It's totally optional, but I always appreciate your support. For the price of a coffee in a large metropolitan city, it helps to keep this channel running. Who should knit these mittens? So before you start this pattern, here are a couple techniques that you should already know. You should be comfortable knitting, purling, casting on, casting off, and comfortable knitting with double pointed needles. In this video, you will learn how to M1R and M1L, how to chart increases, how to backward loop cast on, and how to place stitches on hold. All right, next let's get into materials. I'm using Malabrigo Arroyo in the color Flama, which Google tells me means flame in Spanish. Ooh. So this is a super soft sport weight merino yarn. It's also a really rich and cheerful orange. This Malabrigo yarn comes in a ton of really pretty colors. As always, I'll throw links to all the materials in the description. We've got two different sizes of double pointed needles, a 3.25 and a 3.75 millimeter needle. So the smaller needle is for knitting the rib portion of the mitten. Because it's smaller, it creates a tighter, stretchier fabric, which is what we want out of a ribbing. The larger needle is used for the body of the mitten. So it's less tight, it has more room to breathe. Now, if you don't wanna buy two sets of needles, that's perfectly fine, I get it. I would suggest getting the larger 3.75 millimeter needles since that's what the pattern gauge is based off of. Okay, moving on. You'll also need some stitch markers, a tapestry needle, some scrap yarn, and a pair of scissors. Cool? Okay, next let's talk about how to choose a size. So this pattern has three sizes. To choose a size, first measure the circumference around your finger, just a little bit below your knuckles. Keep your fingers relaxed, then mark down this number. Then take a look at the finished measurements of this mitten and try to match the finished measurements that's close to your actual finger measurement. So for me, my finger circumference measures around 6.1 inches, and that's closest to the size small, which is 6.2 inches. Now, if you're between sizes, I would recommend sizing down since your mitten will stretch. Oh, speaking of sizes, after you've chosen a size, this is what you should do to keep organized. So right now I pasted the pattern into a word processor and I know that I want to knit a size small. So let's take a look at the pattern here. It says, with smaller needles, cast on 44, 48, 52 stitches. Now, these numbers refer to different size instructions. So 44 refers to a size small, 48 refers to a size medium, and 52 refers to a size large. So I'm knitting a size small, so what I'm gonna do is just highlight 44, and I'm just gonna highlight that in yellow so I know that when I cast on, I need 44 stitches. Okay, let's go down this pattern. So set up round. With larger needles, knit 20 in brackets, 22, 24 stitches. So you should know by now that 20 refers to size small, 22 is medium, and 24 is large. So I'm knitting a small, so I'm gonna highlight 20, and there we go. Okay, so you go through the pattern, and whenever you see the sort of number bracket number number like over here, then you know that this is a size related instruction and you should highlight the size that you are knitting. So I recommend that you do this before you start knitting. It just makes, um, you know, makes the whole process of knitting a little bit more organized and a lot easier. So you can always do this with a pencil or with an actual highlighter. I'm just doing this in my word processor before I print out my pattern. But the point is highlight the instructions that relate to your size before you start knitting. So I'm going to cast on 44 stitches with my smaller needles. So I'm casting on 44 because I'm knitting a size small. If you're knitting a medium or a large, then you can cast on either 48 or 52 stitches. So I'm just going to 
make a knot and I'm gonna use the long tail cast on to cast on 44 stitches onto my double pointed needles and after that I'm gonna evenly distribute my stitches across uh, two other needles. So if you need a reminder on how to knit with double pointed needles then check out this video up top which I've also linked below. At any time if you are confused about a step that I'm doing like for instance if you don't know how to long tail cast on I'll throw a link to a video all about the cast on up top and down below, okay? But I'm kind of assuming that you know how to cast on. All right, so cast on the number of stitches that you need for your size. Cool, so now I've cast on 44 stitches onto my needle and now I'm going to just evenly distribute the stitches across two more needles. So let's see, 44 into three is, oh gosh, that's a hard math equation. Okay, 44 into three is, okay, 14.6. So let's just say 14 and one of them will have like 15 or something like that. All right, so now my 44 stitches are distributed across my three needles more or less evenly. I've got 14, 15, and 15 stitches, and that's fine. It doesn't need to be perfectly even. So now my working yarn is coming off of the needle that is on the right side of my knitting, and now I'm going to use my naked needle here to push into the first stitch on my left needle. Here we go, let's just push into it. Oh, that's a bit of a tight squeeze. And I'm gonna use my working yarn and just wrap it around my naked needle and pull through. That's my first stitch and now we are joined in the round. It's a bit of a jumble, but I am joined in the round. Okay, let's look at our pattern now. So it says we are gonna cast on our stitches and knit two by two rib for two inches. Now two by two rib is basically a knit two and a purl two. So I'm going to knit another two. So now you can see that on my naked needle I've got two stitches. I've knit two stitches. So next I'm going to purl two stitches. So I'll bring my yarn up front and I'm going to purl the next two stitches. Here we go and there we are. So now I've just done my repeat. You can tell, let's get this out of the way, you can see I've got two knit stitches and two purl stitches. So we would just repeat that across our whole round. So here's my little call out. I've got a video all about ribbing one by one and two by two. So you can check that out again up top or linked below if you need a little refresher on ribbing. So now I'm just doing a knit two purl two across my first needle. And we're gonna do that across all three needles. And once we get to the beginning of the round, we're just gonna start all over again, okay? Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And that's all there is to the two by two rib. So here, this is my first round of two by two rib. And now I would just keep on going, okay? Literally just continue. This is my second round and I would just do a knit two. Here we go, let's push my needle into it. Knit two, there we go, okay? and then a purl two, okay? So the tip that I have for knitting uh, any kind of rib, really, uh, in the round is to knit the knits and purl the purls. So you can see these next two stitches are knit stitches, so I would just knit into them, okay? And then the next two stitches are purl stitches, and you can tell by the little bumpies, little bumpy bumps. So I'm going to purl into them. Okay, next two are knit stitches. You can tell by the little V shape if you can see that. So I'm gonna knit into them. Okay, so that's all there is to the two by two rib. Knit the knits and purl the purls. And do this until you have two inches of fabric. So I've been knitting for a while and let's see. And I've got two inches exactly. Perfecto. So now we're gonna work the setup round and we're going to switch over to our larger needles, which I have over here. And I've gotta be careful with these needles because they look so much alike. These are my larger needles and I'm just going to knit directly onto my larger needles. So I'm not like switching, you know, switching my needles out. Much easier to just bring out your larger needles and to knit right into your smaller needles, thereby transferring them over to the larger needles, okay? If that sounds complicated, don't worry. Um, we'll just go through this together. 
Okay, so setup round. With the larger needles, I'm going to knit 20 or 22 or 24 if you are knitting a medium or a large. Here we go, 16, cool. And I'm gonna bring out my larger needle again and put set aside my smaller needle over here. Larger needle, continue knitting across to my second needle. So how many were there here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Okay, 14, 15, and 20, cool. So once you've reached 20, 24, or 22 stitches, then we're going to do something called PM. Now PM means place marker, specifically your stitch marker. So I've got my stitch markers right here. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker and place it onto the needle. Okay, we're going to place marker. That's what the abbreviation means. Then we're gonna follow our pattern and we're gonna do a knit four. So one, two, three, and four. And then it says again, PM, place marker. So we're going to place our marker onto our needle. Cool, and then it says knit to end. All right, easy enough, right? So we're gonna knit to the end of my round. And how do I know where the end of my round is? Well, my dear, <laughs> what you can do is just take a look at your knitting and where the uh, little yarn tail from your long tail cast on is, that marks the beginning and end of your round, okay? So I know that I need to knit one more needle over and then I'll be at my yarn tail and that is the end of my round, okay? Cool, so let's do that. Let's just knit to the end of our round and that will complete our setup round. So I'm nearing the end of my round and here's my last stitch. Cool, all right, so now all of my stitches have been transferred to the larger needles. This is my last small needle, so I'm gonna just set it aside. We don't need this until later on. And then this is my larger needle, so I'm gonna use my larger needle to knit now. Cool, so that was our setup round. And next our pattern says we're going to knit two, two or three rounds even. I'm knitting a size small, so I'm gonna knit two rounds even. And that is exactly what it sounds like. It just means we're going to knit two rounds without uh, increasing or doing anything. Basically just knit two rounds, okay? Or three rounds if you are knitting a size large. All right, so let's do that together. Knit two or three rounds and then meet me back here. I wanted to point out that when you get to the stitch marker right here, all you need to do is slip it over to the right needle, okay? So I'm going to just literally move it over from my left needle to my right needle, there we go, and then just continue knitting, okay? So that's all there is to it. As we move along, this is how you should proceed, moving the stitch marker from the left needle to the right needle. All right, so I've just done two rounds even, and now we're gonna move on to the increase round. All right, so this is exciting because the increase round is what turns our tube that we have here into a mitten that can accommodate a thumb and fingers. It's really what shapes our mitten. Okay, so let's get into it. So increase round, what we're gonna do is knit to the marker. Okay, so let's start our round just by knitting and we're gonna knit all the way over to this guy right here, our first marker. All right, so let's do that. All right, so I'm going to knit up to the marker and here it is, here's my stitch marker. And what I'm gonna do is SM and that means slip marker. And we literally just did that earlier. All it means is we're going to move this marker from the left needle over to our right needle and there we go. Okay, so slip marker, and then it says M1L. Okay, so M1L means make one towards the left. Okay, and this is a directional increase, so the increase is gonna slant towards the left side. Okay, so how do we do this? So I'm gonna take my right needle and pick up that strand of yarn that's running between my two stitches on either needle, and then I'm gonna take my left needle and pick up that strand of yarn again from the front to the back, just like that, okay. So now I'm going to use my right needle and I'm gonna knit into the back of this strand of yarn that I've just picked up, okay? So I'm just going to, here we go, push into that strand of yarn 
and then from the back, okay, and then knit into it. All right, so that is my M1L. Okay, so then I'm going to just knit across the uh, stitches to my next marker. And here we go, cool. All right, so now I'm gonna do my M1R. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up that strand of yarn here, all right, with my right needle, and then I'm gonna pick it up again with my left needle from the back to the front. So here we go, back to front, just like this, cool. And now I'm going to knit into this strand of yarn using my right needle, and I'm going to go through the front this time, just like this, okay? There we go. So now I've just made a stitch right here. So that's my M1R, okay? And I'm gonna slip my marker over and then continue knitting to the end. So if the M1R, M1L is freaking you out, you don't know how to differentiate them, that's okay. You don't have to do the directional increase. I think it looks a little bit nicer, but if you just refuse to do an M1L or an M1R, you can just use one. So you can choose either an M1R or an M1L and just use that that one for all of your increases. So if you like the M1R better, you can just use straight M1Rs, that's okay. Just be consistent. Choose one and continue going with it if you don't want to alternate and follow the pattern. The important thing is that you are increasing where you need to be increasing. The directionality of the increases is just about making the uh, increases look nicer, but functionally, it doesn't really matter whether you use an M1R or an M1L, you just need to increase. So if you take a look at our pattern, next what we're doing is charting some increases. Okay, so let's take a look at our pattern. It says, work two rounds even, then work increase round two in brackets two comma three times. Okay, so if that sounds complicated, we're gonna break down these instructions right now. Okay, so work two rounds even, then work increase round. So all sizes are gonna be doing this. When I have instructions like this, what I tend to do is just write it out in a little chart for myself. So what that means is I would make a little square and a square just represents a round, okay? So work two rounds even, so I'm gonna do two squares to represent two rounds and then work an increase round. Okay, so I'm gonna draw another square and I'm gonna put a little plus mark on top of it to indicate that we are increasing. That's an increase round. Okay, so it says we need to do this two times for a size small and medium and three times for a size large. So I'm doing a small, so I'm gonna write one. So that's kind of one repeat of the increase uh, instructions. And I need to do it two times because I'm knitting a size small. You would also do it two times if you're knitting a size medium. Okay, so here's two. All right, so this is how I would proceed. Oh, and then I'll also write the uh, stitch count. So I will have 50 stitches in total after doing this increase repeat, okay? So what I would do is I would just knit one round and then I would mark it off in my little chart like this, okay? Then I would knit the second round. Once I'm done, I will mark it off like this. Then I know, oh, I've done two rounds even. Now I need to work an increase round and then I would work my increase round and then mark it off like this, okay? And as I work my even round and increase round, I would literally just mark it off in my little chart. And once my whole chart is filled, then I know that I've done the increases I need to and that I should have 50 stitches, okay? So you might have 54, you might have 60. So if you're knitting a large, your chart would look like this because you're doing this a third time, okay? So it would look like this. All right, so that takes care of the first part of the instructions. All right, so I've just finished my first increase chart and I'm gonna do a stitch count to make sure that I have done it correctly. So I'm gonna count up all the stitches here and make sure that I have 50 stitches, which is what I need for my size small. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 50, cool. So I do have 50 stitches, that's excellent. And I should also have 10 stitches between the markers. You'll have 12 stitches if you are knitting a size large. So here we go, two, four, six, eight, and 10, perfect. Okay, so that means I have done my first increase chart correctly, and now I can move on to my second increase chart. So if you move down, you'll see that it says work three rounds even, then work increase round three times. And that's the same for all sizes. Okay, so for this part, I would chart the instructions like this. Okay, so three rounds even, 
Let's just draw this out. One, two, three, and then an increase round here. And then you're gonna do that three times. Okay, so here I'm gonna draw this out. It's not very nice, but it'll do. Here we go. One, two, three. Three rounds even. One, two, three. And then we're doing an increase round. Okay, and then we'll do it again three times. By the end of it, I should have 56 stitches. If you are knitting a medium, you'll have 60. If you're knitting a large, you'll have 66. Okay, so this is how I would chart out my next section of the pattern. You don't have to do this, I just find that it's a lot easier and really helpful for keeping me organized. All right, so continue this next section of even rounds and increase rounds and keep yourself organized. And you can always check your stitch count against the pattern to see whether you've done your charted increases correctly. All right, so I've just finished my second increase chart and let me count up the stitches between my marker. 14 and 16, perfect. So I need 16 stitches for size small and medium and 18 stitches between the markers for size large. So I also counted up all of my stitches and I have 56 stitches, which is exactly what I need for size small. That means that I did my increases correctly, hooray. Next, we're gonna work on the thumb, which is very cool and different. It's gonna involve moving our live stitches around. It's really exciting and that's coming up next. Now we're at the cool part where we're going to divide for the thumb. Okay, so let's take a look at our pattern. We are going to knit to the first marker. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here is my first marker. And now what I'm gonna do is remove the marker. So I'm just gonna take it right off, place it aside. And then I'm going to place these next 16 stitches or 18 stitches if you're knitting the size large. I'm gonna place these stitches onto a strand of scrap yarn. So I've got my scrap yarn right here. I've threaded it onto a tapestry needle. And now I'm just going to move these 16 stitches that are between my stitch marker onto the scrap yarn. So here we go. I'm literally just kind of pushing them onto my tapestry needle here. Here's our last 16th stitch, cool. So I'm just going to pull the yarn through so that it catches all of the stitches. There we go, now they're all on my scrap yarn. And now I'm going to remove the second stitch marker right here, just set it aside. And now you can see that all of my stitches between my stitch marker are on this scrap piece of yarn. Okay, so let's look at our instructions. Next, we are going to cast on one stitch using the backward loop cast on. Okay, so how this works is I've got my uh, needle right here in my right hand and it's attached to my working yarn, right? So what I'm gonna do is just bring the yarn up front here. Cool, okay. So what I'm gonna do is just take this yarn, I'll put it under my index finger, just like this, and then I'm gonna turn my finger like this, and now there's a loop on my finger, right? And I'm going to use my needle and just pick up that loop and drop it off, okay? So that is the backward loop cast on. I'll show you how to do it again. Let's get rid of that loop. So I've got my working yarn here, I've got it underneath my finger, or my fingers underneath the working yarn. I'm going to turn it, and now you can see there's this loop on my finger, right? Right here. So I'm going to pick up that loop with my right needle, and then just tighten it. And there we go, we've just cast it on one stitch right here. Alrighty, let's move on. So now we're going to rejoin for working in the round, and we're going to knit to the end of the round. Okay, so let's just move these uh, the scrap yarn kind of into the mitten, just kind of get it out of the way. And now we're going to rejoin the stitches on these two needles together. So I'm going to use my right hand needle, knit into the left hand needle, and then just knit into it, okay? Just like that, I'll do, I'll pull the yarn a little tightly so there's no big gap, and then just continue knitting this round. And now I have joined in the round again, okay? And if you look closely, you can see here that this looks an awful lot like a little thumb gusset, right? And that's because it is a thumb gusset, okay? Later on, we're gonna pick up these stitches that we just put on our scrap yarn, and then we're gonna knit a little bit more, and that's going to be um, the little pocket for our thumb. You can almost kind of see the shape that our mitten is gonna be, right? This is where our thumb is gonna stick out. Okay, so moving on, we still need to knit to the end of the round, which is right here. 
So let's knit the rest of these stitches here and we will have completed our round. All right, so I'm almost at the end of the round here. Let's see, just got one more stitch. Perfect, okay, cool. So now we have successfully divided our thumb right here and we've just completed that round. Now I should have 41 stitches on my needle. You should have 45 if you're knitting a medium and 49 if you're knitting a large. So just count up your stitches, make sure that you have the number of stitches you need and then you'll know that you have done this step correctly. So we have less stitches on our needle because we put like a bunch of stitches here on our scrap yarn, right? So with the scrap yarn, I just like to throw it like inside my mitten so that they're out of the way you should make sure the yarn is long enough that the stitches aren't going to slide off by any chance they usually stay pretty secure if the yarn is long enough So if we look at our pattern, it says continue knitting for eight, eight or 10 rounds. All right, so that's pretty easy, right? Let's knit for eight rounds if you're knitting a smaller medium and 10 rounds if you are knitting a large. And this part where we're knitting is actually the body of the mitten. So if you take a look right now, you can see that we've got kind of like halfway up our mitten, right? So you can see there's still quite a ways left before it reaches kind of our knuckle area. So that's what these next rounds are gonna do. We're gonna kind of complete the body of our mitten. All right, so go ahead. You can also chart these next rounds. Just make a little mark after every round you complete to keep yourself organized. So I'll see you after you've done eight or 10 rounds. Cool, so I've just done eight rounds of stockinette stitch and I can tell that I've done eight rounds just by counting the stitches from this point. So I can just count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the stitches on my needle is the eighth round. So I've confirmed that yes, I've knit eight rounds in stockinet stitch. Okay, so now let's work the next round. The next round is knit two together, knit two end. So basically we're just decreasing one stitch. So here's my knit two together. I've just pushed my needle into two stitches and knit them together as if they were one. Tighten that up, and now I'm going to knit to the end of the round. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and then we'll tackle the ribbing together next. Great, so I've just knit to the end of the round, and now I have 44, no, I have 40 stitches on my needle. So I'm gonna count them up real quick, two, four, six, 38 and 40, cool. So I have 40 stitches on my needle. If you're knitting a medium or a large, you should have 44 or 48 stitches. Okay, cool. So now we are going to knit our rib. So I'm going to set aside my larger needles and bring in my smaller needles. Here we go. So this is my smaller needle and we're going to knit two by two rib for seven rounds. Then we're gonna cast off loosely. All right, so you know how to do two by two rib at this point, right? So I've got my smaller needles here and I'm just gonna insert it into the first stitch on my left needle and we're just gonna knit two by two rib, okay? So again, we're gonna do knit two and then a purl two. And that is our repeat. So we're switching to our smaller needle so we can get a tighter, stretchier little rib there and that's pretty much it, okay? So pretty self-explanatory. We'll do seven rounds of two by two rib, and then um, you'll meet me back here and we will cast off together, although I think you should already know how to cast off, but we'll go through it together just uh, just because we're friends, okay? And we do everything together. <laughs> All right, so work that two by two rib and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I've done seven rounds of two by two rib and now we can cast off loosely. Now, in order to get a loose cast off, I'm going to use my larger needle. So the stitches right now are on my smaller needle, but because we want looser cast off, we're going to reintroduce the larger needle and that'll give us a stretchier cast off. So here's my larger needle and we're just going to cast off, just a regular old cast off. So I'm gonna cast off in pattern, which means that I'm going to knit the knits and purl the purls. So I've got a purl stitch here, so I'm going to purl it. Then bring the stitch over the second stitch. Here's a purl stitch, so I'm going to purl that stitch and bring the first stitch over the second stitch. 
So this is a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit into it. So that's what it means to cast off in pattern. So go ahead and cast off all your stitches in pattern. When you get to the end, we'll do the last stitch together. I've got just one more stitch to cast off, and there we go. So now I've got one stitch left on my needle. I'll get out my scissors and I'll leave a six or seven inch tail and then just snip it right off. Then I'm gonna take this yarn, bring it over my needle, grab the stitch on my needle and pull it over that strand of yarn, thereby securing it and pull that strand of yarn through. There we go, cool. All right, so now I'm gonna weave in this end here. I find it's a lot easier to just turn the mitten inside out. So here's our loose end, and I'm gonna get out my tapestry needle and just thread it up. There we go, cool. So now you can see a little bit of a gap here, right? It's a little bit uneven. So I'm going to insert my needle into the other side of that gap and just pull it closed. So now you can see it looks a lot nicer now. It's more even. And I'm gonna go into this side again and find the top of the cast off edge and just pull it in. So I'm just trying to close the gap. And I think that looks really nice now, it looks pretty flat. So I can go in another time and just flatten it out there. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to hide my yarn tail into the stitches. As you know, I like going into the purl bumps of stitches. So I'll go into like four or five different stitches just to camouflage the yarn tail and keep it in place. So now I'll get my scissors out and just snip off the yarn tail. Turn the mitten back to the right side and now you can see that it looks really nice and even. You can't even really tell where the original yarn tail was at. All right, so next we're gonna work the thumb of the mitten. So now my mitten is off the needles. Oh my gosh, it looks so cute and adorable. Oh, okay, so at this point you can actually put the mitten on and see how it fits and see how you like it. And oh my gosh, I love it. It looks so good. I mean, if I do say so myself, <laughs> I really like this. I think it feels really good. And if you feel like the uh, mitten is a little bit too short, maybe you want the top of the mitten to hit like a little bit taller or like right underneath your knuckles, you can always put the stitches back on your needle and knit a little bit more. I find that I like the mitten to hit well below the knuckle. It just gives me a little bit more mobility, I guess. And um, yeah, this is like a legit mitten, right? I mean, all we're missing is the thumb, which we're gonna do next. But you know, at this point, just put on your mitten, admire your work, show everyone around you that you made this. How amazing are you? Yes, celebrate yourself. <laughs> and next we're gonna work the thumb and then we'll be done. Oh my gosh. All right, so now let's get on to the thumb. We are going to use our larger needles here and we're going to put the stitches on our thumb back onto the needles. All right, so I'm gonna bring out the ends of my scrap yarn here because they were on the inside. And I'm just going to place these stitches back onto my larger needle. So I should have like eh, 16 stitches, right? If you're knitting a size large, you'll have 18 stitches. So I'm just going to kind of very carefully place these stitches back onto my needle, just going like one by one. And when they're all on my needle, I can just rip out that scrap yarn and it'll be really satisfying. <laughs> so I've got two, four, six, seven. I think I probably can do less stitches because I need three needles on here. All right, so now I've put my thumb stitches onto three needles. And now I can remove the scrap yarn because we don't need it anymore. So what I can do is pull it. Ooh, and that was really satisfying. I love that feeling. <laughs> All right, cool. So now we're going to rejoin our ball of yarn. So here we go, here's my yarn. And we're gonna rejoin it to our thumb. Okay, so I'm gonna say that the first stitch of our round is gonna be here. So I'm just gonna stick my naked needle into this first stitch here. I'm gonna bring my working yarn over. Where is it? Okay, here it is. And I'm gonna make a little loop on my working yarn and just put it onto my naked needle. Okay, I'm gonna hold it like this and then pull a stitch through just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna knit my second round or my second stitch 
and I'm going to grab my working yarn again. This is uh, the one that's attached to my ball of yarn and I'm going to knit a second stitch. All right, there we go. All right, so we're gonna just knit across all of the thumb stitches. Okay, so now my working yarn is attached to my knitting, to my thumb stitches, and now I'm going to just knit across all of them. And it might be a little bit finicky and clumsy because we don't have a lot of stitches. There should only be like 16 or 18 thumb stitches. So it, it will be a little bit clumsy, but we're gonna be done with the thumb pretty quickly. So I'm moving on to my second needle, knitting those thumb stitches, just like this, a pretty quick knit. And then here's my third needle. Okay, and again, we're just going to knit across the third needle. Here we go, cool. So I've just knit across 16 thumb stitches. I'm gonna just push the needle in so that the stitches are secure. Okay, so let's look at our mitten right now, okay? So I'm looking at it from the top. This is the top of our mitten. And you can see here at the top, there are no stitches, right? It's just kind of bereft of stitches. So what we're going to do is pick up two stitches, one on this side, one on this side, so that we can close up that hole. What we don't want is to join the thumb stitches in the round and then have like a gaping hole here, right? That's not gonna look nice. So we're going to pick up one stitch from this side, pick up one stitch from this side, and then join in the round, okay? So let's just do this together. And here we go. So you can see this was our last stitch on my third needle. And now what I'm gonna do is just go into, on this side here, I'm just gonna push my needle like underneath and like pick up like uh, the bar that kind of runs between the stitch, just like this, okay? And then I'm going to knit into it like that, okay? And now I've just picked up one stitch, right? So I can show you that again. Just undo that. You can look on this side of your mitten, just go into one of these stitches on this side. All right, like this maybe, there you go. And then knit into that strand of yarn you just picked up and there you go, you've just picked up one stitch, perfect. Okay, so you can kind of experiment with this if you feel like, eh, I don't really like where I picked up that stitch, you can undo it again and look for another area that you think would look better. Okay, so I can go back to the uh, bar underneath and pick up that stitch and eh, okay, I like that. I like that placement a little bit better and then move on. So we've just picked up one stitch on this side. Now I'm going to turn my mitten over. So you can see that this area here doesn't have any stitches on it. So that's why I'm gonna just go into one of these stitches. Here we go, there we go. Picked up the bar in between that stitch and now I'm going to knit into it. There we go. And now I've just picked up a stitch on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at it and I'm reasonably happy with that. It looks pretty good. And now we can just join in the round. Now there's this little yarn strand that's just poking out. This is where we initially joined our ball of yarn and it's driving me nuts. So I'm gonna go into my mitten and just grab it because I feel like it's getting in the way and pull it inside of my mitten so I don't have to see it. Great, okay, so now that we have picked up two stitches, we are able to join in the round and we should have 18 stitches if you're knitting a small and a medium or 20 stitches on your thumb if you're knitting a large. Okay, so let's move on. Next round, we're going to knit one round in stockinette stitch. So we are gonna join this in the round. All right, here we go. And we're just gonna knit one plain round. So I'm nearing the end of my first round and you can see that it is a major needle party here. There's just so many needles and such a small number of stitches. It is a little bit challenging, especially this last needle has two extra stitches on it. So, you know, I'm gonna redistribute some of these stitches in just a bit when we finish our round. Here we go. All right, so I've just finished my first round in stockinette stitch and you can see one of my needles has like four stitches and this one has like a bunch of stitches which makes it kind of difficult to knit so i'm just going to redistribute these stitches around so that they're a bit more even and it's a little easier to knit on here we go cool that feels a lot better now okay Alrighty, so I've done one round in stockinette stitch and the next round we're going to knit one by one rib for eight rounds and then we're gonna cast off loosely in pattern. Okay, so one by one rib is very, very simple. What it involves is just knitting one. So here I'm gonna start my one by one rib right now. 
knit one. Okay, I'm gonna pull that tight and purl one. Okay, and that's it, that's the repeat. Knit one and purl one. Okay, so we're gonna do this across our thumb stitches for eight rounds. And then we're gonna cast off loosely in pattern. So for this portion, I'm not gonna you know, go through the casting off part because we already cast off um, the top part of our mitten. So I assume that you know how to cast off the thumb, all right? So I'll meet you back here after you have cast it off. And then we'll talk about weaving in ends and doing a little bit of finishing work. After this, we are like basically done, okay? So rah, rah, you're doing a great job. We are almost there, so close. So here we go. Here is my last stitch. I'm gonna get my scissor out again and leave like a six or seven inch tail. There we go. And I'm just gonna bring my yarn up front over the stitch and then bring the stitch over the yarn. Pull the yarn through, tighten it up. And here is my finished mitten, practically finished. We need to weave in ends, but basically finished mitten. Oh my gosh, I'm so pleased with this. Oh wow, okay, so I'm gonna just try this on real quick. And oh my gosh, it looks so cute. Oh wow, so we've got some loose ends to weave in, which we'll do in a little bit. I really like the placement of the thumb. It sits just below the bend, which is excellent. Now, if you look at the thumb here, you can see that there's no gaping hole, and that's what picking up those two extra stitches did. It kind of closed up that gap. So enough admiring, next let's weave in our ends. We've got a couple ends to weave in. First, we've got the one here by our thumb. So as always, I like to turn the mitten inside out because we're going to be bringing all of our little ends to the wrong side of our work. So it makes sense to just turn everything inside out. So let's start, um, let's start here. Let's do the thumb. So when we're weaving in the ends for the thumb, it's you know largely the same concept as when we were weaving in ends for the top part. We'll put the uh, yarn through a tapestry needle. Okay, and then here you can see there's like a little bit of a gap, right? This part is a little taller than this one, so we would just bring our yarn to the other side. We wanna close up that gap. There we go. So that looks nice and even, actually. Just by moving it over once, it looks pretty good. So I'll just do it a couple more times. Just push the needle through. There we go. And then go through again. Here we are. And then weave in our yarn tail. We'll do it through four or five stitches. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we will just snip it right off. Cool, all right. So we've got another one down here. All right, this was from our cast on. And we've got another one here. So this is where we joined the yarn for our thumb. So this is a nice opportunity to further tighten up our thumb area here. So if I look um, at the thumb, you can see there's like a little bit of a hole here, right? It's not as tight as I would like it to be. So I'll just tighten it up and I can do that by identifying the holes here and then going into the other side of the hole and then literally just tightening up that area. I'll bring my needle over here to the other side of the hole. So I've got two little holes here, tightening it up. And that already looks a lot better. I can't see much of a hole anymore. If I wanted to, I could just go into another stitch and tighten it up further. Okay, let's move over to this side. Here I can see a little bit of some holes, holeage going on. So I'm just gonna bring my yarn over. We'll just travel over to the holes and bring my yarn onto either side of the hole so that I can tighten it up, close it up a little bit. Here's another bit of a hole and there we go. I'm just gonna, again, I'm not gonna pull too tightly cause you can actually create more holes if you're just pulling really tightly on your knitting. So I'm going a little bit gently, just get it kind of snug. And I feel like I've already woven in this um, strand of yarn a couple times just by closing up those holes. So I'll just go in like three times more. And yeah, let's just do another one. What the heck? All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to get my scissor out and just snip that right off. Cool, all right, so that's two down. We've got one more here. 
And this one is pretty straightforward. Weaving this in is identical to weaving in the thumb and the finger portion of the mitten. So I'm not gonna go over how to weave this end in. You can head back to the earlier weaving portions and do a little review if you need. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna just cut it off here. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over. Let's see, dun dun dun, this is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Just gonna try it on and ah, it looks so cute. Oh my gosh, I can't get over how cute it is, wow. So let's take a look at the thumb and it looks really nice now. There's no holage going on. It looks very nice and closed. And this is so adorable, oh my goodness. So <laughs> if you made this mitten, you should be very proud of yourself and go show your friends, show your parents, show everybody. They should be bowing at your feet because you are a knitting goddess, knitting god. Thumbs up. Ooh, it's so cute. Oh man, I, I just, I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna state the obvious, which is that we only have one mitten right now, but most people have two lovely hands. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start the whole process all over over again, okay? There's no like um, right side or left side for these mittens. I could easily take them off and put them on my left hand. So you would literally just start the whole process again and knit your second mitten. One mitten later. When your second mitten is done, you'll have a beautiful pair of mittens that look like this. Amazing, seriously, good job. Go and show everyone you know, hold a coffee mug and be really obvious about modeling your mittens and bring up the fact that you made them at every opportunity. Because this is a big deal. You made a pair of freaking mittens. Hashtag shameless mittens. Hashtag me made mittens. Hashtag I am amazing. Go and enjoy your new fingerless mitts. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com. Thanks for watching. Tag me on Instagram if you made these mittens and use some ridiculously braggy hashtag because that is hilarious and you are clearly a knitting genius. So celebrate yourself. Happy knitting. Subscribe for more knitting tutorials and questionable social media advice and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.